So, uh, recently I went to go watch A Cure for Wellness. Um, if you guys haven't heard about it, I don't really blame you. It's not really a movie that was well known. But it's uh, directed by Gore Vindinsky. I apologize for the the um, crude pronunciation. And it's recently came out, just about like two weeks ago, I'd say. And, you know, what can I say about this movie? Um, I'll give it this. It has really good uh, cinematography. So let me give you a brief synopsis. So... So I'm reading this straight off of um, Wikipedia. At a large financial services firm in New York City, a man named Morris is working late when he suffers a massive heart attack. He drops dead. Morris is not sweet. Lockhart. So Lockhart's the main character. He's played by Dane DeHaan. I don't know if you guys watched uh, Amazing Spider-Man. He's uh, Harry Osborn in that one. So basically, I'll just give you the short version. So basically, it's about this guy who's a, he works for, like, a New York firm. Um, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, he works in New York, like, a financial services in New York. And um, basically, what he did was he, he kind of, like, um, he kind of moved some numbers around. So he kind of, like, cheated for, um, for, like, a merger that they were trying to get for the company for, well, you know, so that they could, um, you know, financially get better, they're like their company. So, anyways, so he moves the numbers around so that can happen. But his, you know, his higher ups kind of find out, and then they're like, "Hey, you know, the CEO is actually in the Swiss Alps. We need him to come back to, you know, fix this before we make this merger." And, you know, the other guy, Morris, whatever his name is. He died of a heart attack, or whatever. So we need you to go over there, or else we're going to turn you in, because you did something illegal. So then that happens, and then we get the story of, um, you know, of this guy going to the Swiss Alps to get the CEO back. So for one part, this movie has great cinematography, really beautiful the cinematography was by Bohan Bazelli. Sorry if I pronounce your name wrong. And it does have a really good style. Like cinema the cinematography is beautiful. Like one of the like films that had the best cinematography besides Moonlight, in my opinion. But I'll tell you this. The movie has no story. And it's two hours long. So imagine sitting in a theater for two hours. Or someone just sneezed for two hours and you know the most part, important thing about a movie is the, the story but it's never really there also uh, Dan Duhon's character or Dan Duhon's character is a freaking asshole so I didn't really care about him the whole time so you're sitting for two hours in this movie and I brought my girlfriend in too and nothing really happens it's like they want to set up this mystery, but they don't know how to um, establish it. Sorry, sunbeam. They don't really know how to establish it enough to make it interesting. And it's like, in the beginning, it was pretty interesting because, you know, you're hearing about the story. But it never really goes anywhere until a very weak payoff at the end. So, you know, just keep that in mind. So, the central... Um, theme of this movie is water so that that whole um place that he's going to is like a retreat you know they um you know wealthy ceos go to this place to kind of um let off stress and stuff like that and the means that they do that is they have water treatments so um you know this place in the swiss Alps is supposed to have been built on top of a very um you know like a water like a sort of i don't know how to explain it it's like a it was water underneath the place, basically. And that's what they do all day. They get treated by the water, and then they drink the water and stuff like that. And, um, you know, um, there's also eels in the water. So um, I can't explain this without spoiling some stuff, I feel. So um, I'll just give you the short version. So the eels can survive in the water. 
All right, so basically, um, there's this whole like uh, story about the place that that it that the retreat was built on. So basically, there was this baron um, who lived there in the 18th century, and um, he was obsessed with having a uh, perfect gene pool. So basically, he would want to um, he would basically let him to do an inbreeding. So he married his sister. And then he wanted to have a child with her. But the problem was with her that she couldn't have a child. So um, he was trying to find this cure for, um, you know, for her not being able to have a child. Instead of just realizing, you know, brothers and sisters can't have, you know, children. Anyways, well, technically, but anyways, they would all die. They would be stillborn. So, um, you know, he was testing the townspeople, like um, experimenting on them. Um, to try to find this cure for that. But, you know, lo and behold, the townspeople didn't like that very much, so they went up there and burned down his castle and supposedly killed him and killed everyone there. So, um, you know, that's the kind of the mythology about it. In the beginning, it's just mentioned, and it's kind of strong about throughout the film, but it's not as strongly there. It's just, you know, there. And then we have our main character. He's kind of like investigating around because he wants to get the CEO out of there. And he wants to go back home. But he's um, he's kind of like put into that place as a patient after they get into a car crash. So he gets into a car crash and, um, you know, car flips over, he breaks his leg. So he has to stay there as a patient now. And, um, you know, he gets away with a lot in the film, I feel. If, like, this is, like, a real place and you're seeing some, like, shady stuff, you'd think that they would do away with you or something. But nope. There's, like, several times in the movie that he's just walking around freely and gets into all sorts of, like, you know, trouble. And they still keep him alive. And I, I didn't really feel bad for the character either. He was kind of an asshole. Like, how can you sit for two hours trying to care about this character and like you don't even care about him so um you know story is really weak so um now i go into acting acting was actually pretty good um even though i didn't like um da dane dehan it was um mostly in the writing that didn't make him favorable but he was a pretty good actor we also have uh jason isaacs and uh, mia goth I don't really hear about Mia Goth much, but Jason Isaacs has been in a few films. And he does a really good character being the, um, he does a really good uh, job being the character of the Doctor. He makes a really uh, good, believable performance. And Mia Goth was actually not that bad either. Um, back to what I was saying about cinematography. Cinematography was the best, in my opinion. I know I keep bringing it up, bringing it up, bringing it up. And I think, in my opinion, that's the only thing that kind of saves the film. But at the same time, this film could have done without 30 minutes, 30 to 45 minutes, and this movie would have been solid. Like, a solid A. Well, no, it would probably still have been like a B. B minus. Because the story was really weak. Um, but basically, this is just my review of A Cure for Wellness. I, couldn't, I can um, do a little spoiler section. Probably just going to do a little spoiler section after that, if you want to watch that. Um, but I give this film a C minus because it still had, you know, great cinematography. It had the makings of a good movie, just the writing held it down, and you know, very poor writing, and the runtime ran it down too. You know, if it was like an hour and thirty minutes, it could have been a B minus easily. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll be giving you guys a new review pretty soon. And remember, comedy is the best kind of medicine.